Tribal Art, Art of Brazil. For 100 million years, unspoiled rivers and streams have wound their way through the Brazilian rainforest. Millions of plant and animal species have inhabited that space. There too, indigenous people have created beautiful feathered headdresses, masks, ear ornaments, body paintings, and beadwork, which they have worn to mark births, puberty, marriages, and other sacred ancestral rituals. Body decorations, songs, dances, and music have symbolized wisdom passed down from one generation to the next, strengthening the bonds between nearly 350,000 indigenous Brazilians and their home, the Amazon rainforest. Learning featherwork during puberty Men use feathers from parrots, toucans, and curassows bred in captivity. From the tail or wings, they pluck pinai feathers with a continuous surface and a spindle shape. From the ribs and abdomen, they pluck broad, rounded feathers. From the neck, they pluck downy feathers. To create a headdress, plumaciers, feather workers, bond feathers to fabric, thatch, or wood supports using resin or wax. Each tribe has created their own unique designs that reveal who they are and where they come from. At the World Indigenous Games, a Brazilian Bororo tribesman competes in the archery competition. In some Amazon tribes, the bow and arrow have replaced the spear thrower for hunting. Some groups fight with lances and clubs, but the bow and arrow are the principal weapons of warfare. Arrows have unique tribal markings and feathers. To make an arrow, river cane is cut for the shaft. A wooden tip is inserted on one end. A knock is cut on the other end. A stone, bone, or shell arrowhead is secured on the tip using sinew, deer tendon, and tree resin. Two or three feathers are set along the shaft at the knock end, fletching. A tribesman blows a projectile at a target with a blowgun, also called a blowpipe or blowtube. Hunters use seeds, clay pellets, or darts to kill small animals like birds and monkeys. Some tribes dip dart tips in carrere or other poison to paralyze their prey without making it inedible. In addition to blowguns, tribesmen also make harpoons, traps, arrows, and snares. Tribesmen often raise the orphaned young of their prey. These pet monkeys, parrots, curassows, wild boars, and tortoises are treated like family and are never eaten, with the exception of large tortoises. Raimundo, the Sana tribal elder of the small Tupé village up the Rio Negro River from Manas, looks on. He wears a headdress made from feathers of the hyacinth, blue and gold, and scarlet macaws. His face is painted with the crushed red seed of Urumcum fruit. The most important role of the tribal elder is to protect and transmit ancestral traditions. Each ritual has its own dance steps and music. Pan pipes, rattles, musical bows, or end-blown horns accompany dance ceremonies associated with rites of passage, shamanic healing rituals, house purifications, and seasonal observances. The Sana children play panpipes made of cane, wrapped and tied with shambira palm fiber. Rattles are made of gourds, turtle shells, calabashas, wood, cocoons, bark, hide pouches, animal horns, and coconut shells. The string of a musical bow is plucked, rubbed, or struck between two ends of a curved stick. Inblown horns are made of bark, bamboo, calabashas, wood, bone, or clay. Vocal music varies from tribe to tribe. Most songs speak of animals, forest spirits, and mythical beings. The Quikuro tribe has more than 2,000 songs. A young Karaha tribesman from Banana Island wears feather earplugs, a feather headdress, beadwork, and body painting, including Amarua, two facial circles. Mirani's rectangular beaded breastplates are made of glass beads. Long ago, they were made of red, white, and black seeds. 
In most tribes, women create body paintings with thin bamboo spatulas, bluish-black Geneva juice, annatto dye, and charcoal. Animal designs are commonly used on faces, hands, and feet. On Banano Island, two Karaha girls participate in the lasso ritual, wearing any two loincloths, feathered ear ornaments, miranis, bracelets, lukurawokus, monochromatic beaded necklaces, body paintings, and gaiters, leg coverings. Indigenous peoples of South America adopted the tradition of body painting from the Incas. According to the anthropologist Levi Strauss, the Caduveo tribe believed that designs on the face conferred social status, spirituality, and dignity, and that unpainted human beings were indistinguishable from mere animals. A Karaha boy from Bananao Island wears his lori lori headdress. As the parrot population declines, birds are more difficult to capture. As a result, only a few traditional feather Karaha designs, such as a lori lori and a heto, are still made today. Sometimes, plumaciers dye white feathers by soaking them in the natural red dye of the Brazil wood tree, from which the name Brazil was derived. The dye can also be used for textiles, inks, and paints. In the days of Henry IV of Spain, the vibrant red color was so popular that Europeans traveled to the Americas to bring back Brazil wood. Santa Isabel youths, 10 to 12 years old, participate in a large Caraja male initiation ritual called Heto Hoka. The boys stay in a ritual house called the Big House for seven days where their hair is cut and their bodies are painted. At the end of their confinement, they wear a feather rajeto, house of the head, gaiters, bracelets, and miranis. Their lower lip is perforated, an elaborate ornament, a symbol of maturity, is inserted. In many tribes, such as the Guarani, young men learn religious chants and dances during this period of isolation from the community. During the Tixinan ritual of the Kaksanawa tribe, the song leader, Chief Mapu Huni Quinn, wears a kushima, a long robe with Kenya designs, a headdress of white macaw and red macaw and hawk feathers, and a hanging back ornament of Kuksudani hawk and Hanadani feathers. He represents the Inca and his allies, the king vulture, eagle, and Tixana. The chief sings about the creation of the world to the rattling of ankle shells of his dancing companion. Tixinan takes place each year during the green maize season or after a funeral. This ritual reinforces a belief in life, raising people's spirits. Indigenous tribes arrived in Brazil over 17,000 years ago. Their ranks had grown to 11 million Indians within 2,000 tribes by the time the Portuguese arrived 500 years ago. The Portuguese were known to capture Indians, bind them to the mouths of cannons, and blow them to pieces. The Spanish crown believed the indigenous would be better off as human slaves rather than free animals. Tribes were extinguished by massacres, epidemics, slavery, intermarriage with whites and blacks, and the loss of lands required for subsistence. The Brazilian Amazon indigenous population today has dwindled to about 350,000 within 305 tribes. The Amazon rainforest encompasses about 4 million square miles. More than 19% of the Brazilian Amazon forest cover has been clear-cut or burned since the 1970s. The 91-year-old Cayapo chief Rayoni Mectutire, known for his colorful feather headdresses and the large mahogany disc inserted in his lower lip, has traveled the world, raising awareness about the environmental threat posed by the destruction of the rainforest. It has been jeopardized by illegal deforestation, the use of hydroelectric dams for generating electricity, uncontrolled fires, and agribusiness. Chief Rayoni's granddaughter, Mayalu Tixucarame, of Brazil's Cayapo Waja people, warns that Brazil's native peoples and their ancestral homelands confront serious and escalating threats to their rights, resources, and cultures from the country's aggressive industrial development policies. 
The current Brazilian administration is trying to roll back indigenous land rights. Many indigenous peoples are being exterminated by violence and plundering of their sources of survival, especially their lands. Without guarantee of their territories, there is no survival for the indigenous and for the rainforest which they have preserved for millennia. The Cayapo are calling on the Brazilian government to end forest fires set by ranchers and farmers to illegally clear land and expand their businesses. For years, thousands of huge Amazon fires have continued to spread unchecked, turning thousands of miles of rainforest into ashes. These destructive fires have dire consequences for the world. The rainforest helps balance the global carbon budget by absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, plays a key role in the global water cycle, stabilizing global climate and rainfall, and supports biodiversity. In the past, Cayapo women devoted five to six hours a day to body painting. They painted complex linear patterns representing animals, nature, and the meaning of rituals. These paintings lasted a few days. Cayapo women today make elaborate beadwork, learning the skill as young girls. Their necklaces, breastplates, armlets, gaiters, shoulder straps, and slings are used by the whole tribe at ceremonies. Their patterns imitate animal skins, such as the boa constrictor, or other animal parts, such as a monkey's finger, a scorpion's spine, a parrot's eye, or an alligator's tail. During their initiation into manhood, Manoki boys, 12 to 14 years old, traditionally spent weeks in the House of the Flutes, learning the secrets of men and the teachings they would use in adulthood. Tribesmen helped them plant a garden, playing flutes at night. When the garden was ready, they would offer it to a chosen woman who would tend it and share its bounty with the tribe. The nasal septum of each boy is perforated, and the Ixireti nasal flower made of blue and gold macaw and toucan feathers is inserted in the hole. They wear beaded necklaces and a feather headdress. The tradition of the Kuvad is found throughout forest culture. Pataxa fathers observe a rigorous diet for a week after their child's birth. This tradition is based on the idea that a mystical relationship exists between father and child. Body strength and health, the capacity to procreate, the growth of children, and even psychic qualities are believed to be obtained by magical means. These means may include the perforation of the nasal septum, lips or earlobes, the painting of the body, and the use of adornments. A little stick passed through the nasal septum is believed to prevent sickness. In the 18th century, a Portuguese judge Jose Xavier Machado Monteiro took Pataxo's sons from their families to teach them a trade and distributed the daughters to white homes to civilize them by teaching new customs in the Portuguese language. Speaking their native Pataxo language was forbidden. This common practice tore indigenous families apart throughout much of the Americas. Today, tribes strive to keep their 274 languages, ceremonies, kinship systems, knowledge of the forest, and spiritual connection with the natural world intact for generations to come. Members of the Taparapi tribe wait to perform a ceremonial dance with wooden war clubs in a Piaraku village near Seo Jose Duzingo, Mato Grosso State. In 2020, Amazon tribes formed an alliance against Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro's threats to circumvent indigenous rights guaranteed by the Brazilian Constitution. The tribal alliance believes that gutting the tribe's ability to control indigenous lands will allow mining, logging, and agricultural interests inside, destroying natural ecosystems that are critical to the health of the planet, endangering us all. Tapirapi men make the Tawa mask in secret in the men's house. Macaw feathers radiate outward from a wooden semicircular form. Yellow and orange feathers dominate the face. Darker feathers run down the center. White shells for eyelids and teeth embellish cutouts for the eyes and mouth. Twisted fibers with feathers dangle below the eyes. During the Tawa ceremony, 
The Taparapi believe the spirit of the enemy inhabits the mask. Their reenactment of an old tribal war ends with the victory of the Taparapi over their enemy. The Waha reside in a single circular village with the House of Flutes in the middle of a central plaza. They believe spirits transmit music to the male master of the Kawoka flutes through a dream. After hearing the music in his dream, the master plays it on his flute. After hearing the master play the music, a tribeswoman sings it. Through her performance, the spirit's music returns to them in a humanized form. During the ritual, dancers wear headdresses, ear ornaments, armlets, and body paintings. For millennia, beautiful Amazon feather headdresses, body paintings, beadwork, and mask symbolize a spiritual connection between indigenous peoples, their rivers, streams, and tropical forest. They reflect the identity, history, and dignity of their wearers. They reveal hidden meanings of sacred ancestral rituals. They honor the spirits of plants, animals, and the rainforest that is their home. That home is on fire. That home is under siege. When your home is on fire, what do you do? You cry out for help and you hold on. By holding on to their traditions, indigenous tribes hold on to a way of life where nature nurtures their bodies and souls.